the internet. Hello, everyone. Oh, my God. A second Selenium conference. This is awesome. I'm super stoked to be here. I've had conversations with many of you, which has been super cool. Um, so my name is Adam Christian. I work at Sauce Labs. And um, so I realize a bunch of you have seen me talk before at various other conferences and this last year. But I have some good news, which is that you're not going to listen to me talk very much today. Um, David Stark is going to be doing a whole bunch of um, digging in the, de the details of this project, which is good because he did most of the work. Um, so just a quick history on the project. Uh, I made a little uh, testing framework back in 2007 called Windmill, which had this concept of a all JavaScript CSS um, HTML UI, which I've always believed is how that's supposed to work. Um, and that was used to build a product for a company to go, go, go test it, uh, which Sauce bought the technology and we reopened sourced all of it. Um, and we came up with the release of SE Builder 1, which was like, here's this thing. Uh, does anybody care? And it turns out people care. We've had a lot of downloads and a lot of people contributing. We've got, uh, you know, on AMO, we've got direct downloads um, and then source code polls, which is pretty cool. So. Um, what is happening now? So this is sort of your, what have we been doing for the last year? Uh, and we want to get a 2.0 uh, release out, which means a bunch of things. Uh, we've done a year of, of development, crazy huge refactors, uh, completely added as much of Selenium 2 support as we can. That, that's uh, got some methods left to go, and he's going to talk about the real details of that. Uh, move the project over to the GitHub. I know that's a really big deal where Simon is probably pining somewhere. I don't know where he is. But we have found that this has been a, a sort of a nicer experience for um, working together. Uh, and we want to make sure that everything's Apache 2. So we put that in the root of the project, but we're going to go through and add a header to all of the files to officially be uh, Slim uh, 2 and Apache. Um, and then I put up a splash page at sebuilder.com because well, that's just a cool thing to do. So you can find links to all the good places from uh, one spot. Uh, so uh, I kind of keep track of what's going on, even though we haven't done any releases in quite a long time on AMO. And we've got a bunch of languages and all the platforms and a bunch of different Firefox cuts, um, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, but the point is that it's time to build a community. Um, I know there's been... Uh, do I use Builder? Do I use IDE? We need a story. We need to build a community around one of these projects. Um, one person's not going to be able to do all the work to make these be what they should be. Um, we need plugins, and we want everybody interested to be part of the story of how do we architect uh, plugin architecture? How do people want to build these? Um, I would like to see this whole thing just be in um, JavaScript with no native hooks of any kind and just Build them like a website. Uh, and then we need this to be native in all of the different browsers. Right now it's just Firefox because that's been uh, the platform, but having everything be in web technologies is pretty nice because it gives you an opportunity to port that over to other browsers. And uh, we need your help, and I'm gonna, we're going to tell you why. So I'm gonna, without further ado, I'm going to let David Stark, the man who did all the work, uh, tell you what's going on. Sure. Um, I'll need some microphone. They're not, they're not paying attention. Sorry, could I have the microphone on, please? Do you want mine? Um, no, I think they'll see me. Okay, testing. Can you hear me? Great. Okay, so I'm David Stark. I was originally drafted back when this project was called Go Test It to, you know, fix some bugs in it. And uh, through a complicated series of events, I actually ended up staying with the project uh, for a lot longer than I thought I would. And I've remit, like, rewritten large charts of it. And now it's called Builder. So um, what does Builder do? Well, uh, it does both Selenium 1 and Selenium 2. Um, it aims to have the same user experience for both platforms as much as that's possible. And the idea is that it gives you an easy way to start with Selenium 2. And it also possibly gives you a way of transitioning your use from uh, one platform to the other relatively seamlessly. Um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk first a bit about the support for Selenium 1 it has. Then I'm going to talk about uh, what we've done to make it possible to actually uh, record and edit web driver based tests. And uh, then I'm going to talk a bit about the internal architectures, the kind of the guts of how the system actually works. And finally, I'll give you a long list of all the things we want to do with it next. Uh, okay, so Selenium 1, basically it's um, a simple alternative to Selenium ID. Um, it does all of the kind of default basic things you, you, you want to be able to um, work with uh, Selenium scripts. So you can record scripts um, from within the browser, obviously. You can then edit these scripts. Um, you can, you can uh, choose different targets in the browser and do things like that. And it tries to help you find uh, the best, cleanest locator uh, for a given element. You can then play back the scripts. You can play them back in browser. You can play them back via RC uh, using the same interface. And yeah, you can uh, save the scripts and uh, load the scripts and export the scripts into uh, the same set of things that you can do with ID. And the reason why it's the same set of things is that it's the same code. Um, we use ID's code quite a bit. We use it for all of the Selenium 1 I.O. Because, I mean, why would we rewrite it? It's already there. It works great. Um, and as you can see there on top, you can also save it to uh, some Selenium 2 stuff, and I'll talk about how that works in a moment. And yeah, there's support for suites. You can uh, create and edit suites and run them. And uh, there's also support for user extensions to add new step types. And um, you just put them into user extensions.js, which is a file inside the structure. And they use the same format as uh, Selenium ID. So if you've got uh, some custom steps which you're using in ID, then you can paste them in, and hopefully they should just work. Um, OK, so that's Selenium 1. Selenium 2. OK, so the thing about um, Selenium 1 versus WebDriver is that right, Selenium 1 scripts are a list of steps. Uh, WebDriver tests aren't. They're it's just an API. It's just code in a particular language, say Java or Python or whatever. And that's really great because it lets you uh, make much, uh, it gives you much more flexibility for writing uh, all kinds of tests. Um, and that's nice, but it's kind of too flexible for actually doing an ID. And uh, we don't, we'd have to pick a language. We'd have to say uh, builder, okay, um, you're just going to have to do all of your tests in Python. And if you don't like using Python, well, then the project's not for you. You know your problem. You should use Python. Um, and that's not really going to work. <laughs> um, so what we need is what we needed is some kind of way of um, doing WebDriver without committing to a particular language binding. Um, and also doing WebDriver in a way that uh, the UI is pretty straightforward and the UI is pretty similar to uh, how we do Selenium 1. And so we did the fairly obvious thing, which is that we introduced a concept of Selenium 2 steps. Um, and uh, they map pretty closely onto Selenium 1 steps. They're mostly the same, um, but they actually have a particular semantic meaning in, in WebDriver. Um, so, for example, if in Java you do driver.get, then that just turns into get as a step type. And that means, obviously, use flexibility. There's no control flow right now. You can't do with statements, while loops, or whatever. We hope to add that at some point. But maybe it's fine for most scripts, for simple scripts, and it's certainly a start. Um, but the nice thing about this is that the UX is the same. So uh, that's a Selenium 2 script in Builder, and uh, yeah, um, you can barely spot the difference. Some of the names are a bit different, but apart from that, it looks the same. It gives you the same user experience. So there's a very low barrier to entry or even mixing it while there's whatever you want. And then, yeah, how do we save this stuff? Again, Selenium 1 has Selenese as an HTML-based format, which is basically language neutral. And WebDriver uh, doesn't have that, of course. And so we had to invent a new, a new format. And we've uh, chosen this json faced format, which is uh, it's very simple. You can see it. It's just a list of steps with uh, their type and their parameters. And that's the kind of uh, neutral 
editable format which Builder uses to actually uh, store scripts. And uh, what all this means is that uh, we can kind of automatically convert uh, Selenium 1 scripts into um, web driver code. Um, it's about three button clicks. Um, and that means you possibly have an upgrade path. Um, we're not there yet, but eventually we hope that you can pretty much just take your Selenium 1 test suite and uh, run it through a program and out comes web driver code and now you're on web driver. And you can certainly use it for some experimentation. You can say, well, what would this script here, this Selenium 1 script here look like if it were, say, in Java web driver? And it might look something like that. Um, so you can, uh, you can uh, experiment with Selenium too. You can go back and forth. Uh, you, can do also the, you can also do the conversion backwards. So if you want to, you can uh, take uh, this JSON file and turn it back into a Selenium 1 script. So you're not really committing yourself. OK, so what I mean to say really is we've got the same kind of support for Selenium 1. You can record scripts, again, in browser. You can edit them. You can play them back in browser. And you can load and save and export them. So uh, it's pretty much the same. And you can just use WebDriver. OK, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the guts of the system, how this uh, HTML, JS-based thing actually works. So. Um, Nearly all of the code is uh, just HTML, JavaScript, jQuery. There's a very thin wrapper of Azul, which is uh, Firefox's um, kind of native UI stuff, um, which is needed to actually pull up the window and have uh, menu items within Firefox and so on. But that's a tiny amount of code. Um, the large, the, most of the code is completely browser agnostic. Um, and looking at it in a bit more detail, the, another goal uh, which we have with the architecture of it is to say most of the code also doesn't have to care about which version of Selenium you're actually running. Most of the code um, just deals with a script of some sort. So all of the data structures for um, storing the scripts and all of the UI for editing the scripts and everything doesn't care about which version of Selenium you're running. It's all the same code. That's nice because it means if you fix a bug or add a feature or something, you get it for both at the same time. You don't get so much code duplication. There is some uh, version-specific code in some menus and in the recording code, obviously. Um, but we're hoping to really drive that out. Where we really want to be in the end is that um, it has a, the system has a list of Seleniums and each of those Seleniums is an object that just exposes an API, which explains things like uh, what steps are there, how do you play them back, how do you record them, how do you save them, all of these kind of things. But the rest of the code doesn't really have to know which version you're using. Except, of course, for the code, which just the conversion, which you're always going to have to know. So yeah, we want to make it modular. We want to support any number of script types, you know, if there's... Selenium 3 or something weird and exciting and new in a few years, then uh, ideally we can just slot that in and say, yeah, now it supports that too. We want to have uh, extensible lists of step types. Um, we already have that in Selenium 1. We want to define a good way of easily extending uh, what kind of steps you have in Selenium 2 as well. Extensible list of export formats. Actually, after this talk, um, we're going to have an unconference session, and uh, one thing we want to do is we want to talk a bit about how you can hack in uh, exporting into your favorite um, web driver bindings, um, like you want, you want to have uh, Perl bindings or PHP bindings or whatever. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to just add in a file which does the exporting to that. And we want to have really a totally extensible GUI so you can add all new features as plugins, pretty much. OK, so all the things we want to do, all the plans we have. So it's currently in beta. Um, we want more features. We want fewer bugs. Uh, certainly will be some bugs, but we're working on squashing them. So one goal is we want to have broader support, more step types, lots more different uh, export languages. I mean, we really have no commitment to any particular language which you should use. And yeah, we want to make that easy to really um, get the support all the way there and to make sure that we have as many step types for Selenium 2 as possible so you can get as close to the full power of WebDriver 
while still uh, using the user interface of Builder. And uh, to export the code, we'd like it to look really beautiful <laughs> um, because it's important that it's beautiful, it's important that the behavior is consistent across different uh, languages. Um, and people are probably going to use the exporter code as a base for other code they're going to use to learn from it, they're going to auto-generate it, whatever. And uh, so it's kind of important that it's right, that it looks good, that it's idiomatic. Um, because we don't want to, we, we really want to put out good code to be out there so um, there's a good kind of culture of using WebDriver in a good way. Uh, we want suites for Selenium 2. Uh, because Selenium 1 has them, and uh, things like JUnit have a concept of suite, so it would be really nice that you could just export the whole thing. And uh, extensibility. So, um, in the long run, it really needs an ecosystem of plugins. Um, it's important because, uh, say, say you want to add some new things, say you have some new language or framework or some new feature which you want. It's so much better if you can just code it up and plug it in, and you don't have to go via the actual main project. Um, so we want to make it really extensible um, in all kinds of ways. And we want to keep the core of Builder pretty simple. So most of the actual functionality for doing different things should be in the plugins, because people use uh, Selenium in all kinds of different ways. I've talked to lots of people, and they use it in all kinds of weird and interesting ways I hadn't even thought of. So I'm not going to think of all the ways of uh, using a wet driver. And uh, so that shouldn't constrain what the project can do. So step plugins should be sim simple plugins that just define these are some new steps. This is how you record it. This is how you play it back. This is how you export it. And uh, one thing we want to do is to make it so that the JSON in a saved Selenium 2 file actually tells you which plugins you need to play back that script. So uh, if you get the script from somewhere else, uh, you will easily know, oh, I need to install these three plugins to actually make it work. And uh, GUI plugins. Fundamentally, it's pretty easy to do GUI plugins because it's all based on jQuery JavaScript. Uh, you can just use jQuery to attach something somewhere in the middle of the DOM, right, and then it's there. But ideally, we want to do it in a clean way. So we'll define listeners, we'll define specific functions for attaching widgets, for saying, well, I would like a new menu item in this menu and things like that. And that way you can do clean extensions that work together well. And yeah, we really want to talk to people who want to develop extensions, who want to port something, who want to implement something, who'd really like to do something on Builder, because that will tell us what uh, hooks and listeners we actually need to put in, so it can be done cleanly. And yeah, the final frontier, other browsers. Um, most of the code doesn't care which browser it's on. Um, there's some stuff about recording. Each browser has its own fun little quirks about how uh, it dispatches um, JavaScript events about how you're meant to listen to Windows being spawned and so on. So that has to be rewritten for each browser. So we want to insulate that away and say, this is all the code that's specific to Firefox. You can just switch it out with a bunch of code that's specific to Chrome instead, and it works in Chrome. And we're working on that. And if anyone wants to give it a try, if anyone you know, knows a lot about Chrome and how its inners and event model and so on works, uh, We'd love it if you gave it a try, if you talk to us, um, because we've been, just been working on Firefox. So, contributors, um, we'd love you all to, you know, help us make this a really good platform for doing all kinds of WebDriver-based stuff. And uh, there's all kinds of different ways of uh, contributing. Try it out, give us feedback. What do you like, what do you not like? Especially what features would it have to have so you could actually start using it in earnest? You know, what features do you need so your organization could actually start using Builder as part of its day-to-day -day work? Um, you know, write about it, how to use things like that. Fix bugs when you find them. Um, you know, give us bug fixes and we'll, we'll do our best to put them in as quickly as possible. Um, have a look at the export to code because, again, uh, there will be people out there who are really great at doing really beautiful Python or know a lot about the web driver, web driver bindings for PHP or something like that. And you'll be the perfect people to actually make good code. 
Um, add a new export language or framework. So yeah, as I said, um, in a little while we're going to talk about uh, how to actually do that in down conference session. And finally, the whole thing's hosted on GitHub. So uh, if you want to, just you know, go to GitHub. There's this button. It's called Fork. Click on it. You get the whole copy of it. Start hacking all kinds of crazy stuff into it and tell us about it. And uh, we'll see if we can put them back in. So yeah, I'm just going to hand back over to Adam now, who's going to make some uh, closing remarks. Thanks for listening. I hope it wasn't too, oh, look, here's all that code. <laughs> so um, am I on? OK, cool. Um, so there's been some question over the last year, like what is the nature of the project? Um, I work at Sauce Labs. He's employed by Sauce Labs. Um, how does this work? And so we had a branch of this called Sauce Builder, uh, which we've basically killed. And the idea is that we want to build this as an open source project, and we want to have the community be involved in how do we build a plugin architecture. Then we'll go build a Sauce Labs or Test Runner or whatever uh, plugin on that, but it needs to be using the same APIs in, in exactly the same way that anybody else would build a plugin. So we've been working really hard. Uh, to come up with ways that we can get you guys involved. Um, and so we're going to have this other session afterwards. And I'm happy if anybody in there comes in and can get an export for a language uh, working. Um, I'm happy to buy you beers if they're not free tonight or tomorrow <laughs> or whatever. Um, but the cool thing about this project is um, I'm in San Francisco. He's in Zurich. The whole thing's on uh, GitHub. And I'm really dedicated to running like this as a, a full-on community project. It, it can't just be us working on this forever. It's just not going to work. Um, so uh, we'll be helping people get plugins in there and available. And like we really want people to be involved. Um, so I, I saw the Mozilla guys did a bunch of really cool planning on what the future would be of IDE. And obviously, I'm going to try to um, work with those guys as much as possible, because I think the content of that is, is still totally right on. There is all these things that we need to do that people want. Um, we need to make that work. Um, so yeah, let's work together and make some cool stuff happen. So um, does anybody have questions about any of this stuff? I know it's a lot of it. A lot of content has been kind of in question, contentious maybe even sometimes. Anything? Huh. I think we answered everyone's questions. <laughs> Um, yesterday, I sat down for the first time hacking on some of the innards of this, and I wrote an exporter in probably under an hour to my little one-off Node WebDriver uh, client. So uh, it's really smart. The way that th this is set up is smarter and more sort of structured than I thought. And so even if you aren't you know, a hardcore programmer, you should be able to get this done in, in a pretty short amount of time. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free to come talk to either of us. We're going to head over. We have a question. Um, I know that uh, Simon alluded to this, and you just alluded to it, but I'm a little bit confused about the relationship between SC Builder and IDE, or why we need two of them. Is, is, is there a goal that they will be combined at some point? Are they going to both keep being developed in parallel? It just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. So I, uh, I spent a lot of time working on IDE, uh, building plugins and stuff like that. And I just found the, the Zool architecture to be really frustrating uh, as, a, as a person who writes website JavaScript all the time. Um, I just didn't want to be spending a lot of my time having to understand Mozilla's specific APIs and working with what I felt was kind of frustratingly restricting uh, UI components. Um, and so when IDE was really young, I wrote the windmill UI, which was all in JavaScript. And so I spent like three or four years working on that. And I've, I found that to be a much nicer experience. So basically, my point is that the reason Builder exists is because I want this community to have that experience in developing on a, on a test building UI. And I still think we're really far away from what a really good experience in a test building UI is. But um, with all the cool stuff that he's been doing, I think that we're actually on a path that's going to get us there. Um, and there is a chat scheduled for this afternoon uh, with everybody involved in IDE and Builder to come up with a, a story 
Um, maybe we should have done that yesterday, <laughs> but here we are. So does that kind of get close? Uh, keep, watch this space, maybe? Anybody else? I guess I'm supposed to stall until Jason comes back. Yeah? I'm right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> So from what I remember from Selenium ID, it was always uh, treated as a first step to get into the Selenium suite, like to get into the Selenium RC. So do you think that with Selenium build, you have the same goal that getting people into the Selenium world and not build a complete kind of ID for the Selenium record and playback kind of scripting? Because in my opinion, record and playback has never worked and probably they will never be. Mm -hmm. So. Um I have done talks over the last two years where I basically encourage people to not use the ID or builder at all. Um, and the reason for that was that I've always believed that as a developer, the, the role of an IDE is to be an on-ramping way to help developers save time. Uh, the, the sort of end game for uh, building tests is that they're written in code in a language that you know uh, that lives somewhere inside of your code ecosystem and has a way of talking to database components and stuff like that. And, but a lot of people find it pretty overwhelming to dive into, I'm writing programs now that automate a web browser. Um, and so conceptually we need an IDE because new users need somewhere to start. Um, and, but the second part of that, and it's something that hasn't happened yet, which is that uh, once a person's in an IDE, we have a unique opportunity at that point to educate them and to point them in a direction of, of uh, winding up in a place where they have a successful experience. And so what I would like to see is, as this goes forward, um, yeah, we're helping people get in the door and get a Hello World demo done, uh, but we're also giving them tools to improve and learn how things work and play around uh, so that what they wind up is a code-based, awesome suite of tests. Um, and there's a lot of space between day one and you know, the ideal solution. Um, so that's kind of how I come at it. I, I use the tool as a way to save an hour sitting there writing manually out, you know, driver.git, click, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, uh, you need to take an ID with a grain of salt like anything else. Uh, I remember the back in the days with generating HTML with WYSIWYG. Um, a lot of people still do that. I can't stand it. So that's where I'm coming from. Anything else? Okay, I think we're good. All right, thank you, Adam. Yeah. I have to remember uh, the notes from this morning.